This video is being brought to you by Kingston Technology. From a huge selection of memory, solid state drives, USB drives, and flash cards, it's guaranteed that Kingston will have something that you need that'll fit the computer that you're working on. So visit Kingston.com today and check out one of the latest products, the Mobile Light Wireless. Hello YouTube, welcome to another episode of Tech Examined. I am your host, Michael Panetta, and tonight we are doing our part two of building the fastest Mac Mini. Okay, so many of you showed big interest in this, and I'm excited to get this started. Now, the first thing I want to do is kind of uh, put a baseline on the 2012 Mac Mini and uh, do a couple uh, obligatory tests that we see on many videos uh, just to kind of get that out of the way and uh, an actual real-world test, and which will include uh, converting a video out of Final Cut Pro 10, which to show you exactly uh, what you're up against and what you have. So you can match it up to what you use, compared to what I use and uh, what comes with it, and then we'll do it afterwards. Now, I do currently still have my 2009 27-inch iMac. That is a 2.8 gigahertz quad-core i7 with 16 gig of RAM, up upgraded, obviously. And uh, I recently, well, I shouldn't say recently, I think it's almost been two years now, I had an SSD installed in that 256 gig in there, and I kept the one terabyte in there, and uh, we actually had to remove the um, the uh, super drive uh, because it wouldn't fit the SSD as well. So I do have that externally. So they're both in there uh, operating. And, of course, the operating system is on the SSD. So in my opinion, that helped uh, me uh, use the computer a lot longer than I probably would have uh, based on what I do. So we're going to throw the test in there for what I do with this and see how it compares to the Mac Mini now and after the fact. So the second thing I want to do is actually show you how to do a backup of your operating system. So should something happen to your uh, computer and uh, you need to put it in a new hard drive or something like that, uh, you can keep a uh, basically a recovery disk or thumb drive uh, of your operating system from your computer. And then that way, uh, if you replace it or uh, you, know, you, you add to it or whatever, or you don't have an SSD and you add to it, and show you how to uh, reinstall that. That's what we will be doing when we put the new SSDs into the Mac Mini because we're taking out the hard drive that's in there and going to be obviously putting the, um, the system on the SSDs too. It's just going to help it make work faster. So those are the two things I want to do, and uh, we're just going to blow through these tests real quick, show you the results that I got, and uh, comment down below what you got and uh, maybe some of the tests that you did, and uh, we can compare notes. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, so the first test we have is an application that is free on the Mac App Store, and it's called Blackmagic Disk Speed, and uh, its name's pretty simple. It tests the speed and, uh, you know, the overall uh, uh, ability of your uh, hard drive or your SSD uh, to perform. So going with those results, this is what we got. All right, so the first test we have here, we're going to do the iMac. And uh, this is the SSD that we're testing. Uh, we've got a write speed of about 225 uh, on that and uh, a read speed of 267. So it is definitely fast. Not as fast as the SSDs that we have today, um, but they definitely know how to uh, put the speeds up there for them. Now, we ran this a second time, and uh, you see it does falter a little bit on the write speeds and uh, slow down a little bit on the reads, but for the most part... It does kind of stick around that 200 range uh, for the two of them. And, uh, you know, so, but once you see the speeds for the uh, for the standard uh, uh, disk drive, uh, you'll definitely see that uh, this is an improvement. So the next one we got here is for the Mac Mini. Now, uh, we are pumping out a whole whopping 93 here, and uh, you can definitely see uh, how that SSD uh, helps uh, put those speeds up. And we got the right read, sorry of 95, 94.8, and then we go in again and we're at 84, 85, and uh, again we're going to pop back over to the read there, and you're going to get about the same score around that. So that is pretty much it for the speeds of those, so let's check out what else we got. All right, so the next test that we have is another popular one through Geekbench. Again, this is an application that you can download off their website for free, and uh, you run the 32-bit uh, which is the free version. If you want to go more and get more in-depth with the results of your testing, uh, you can pay for the 64 
but you know, in my opinion, we're just testing this out just to try it. I honestly don't know what all the numbers means, but I do know that it tests the overall performance of your computer, uh, you know, your hard drive, your uh, to your CPU, to uh, your graphics card, to your memory, all that stuff. It goes through a battery and gives you a, a basically a score, and then you can compare that to what other uh, Macs, uh, other computers, uh, PC related, or even just in your category for your device. So, um, you know, we've got the Mac Mini scores and we've got the iMac scores. So this is what we got for those. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys with all the, you know, technical stuff because, A, I, I don't think it matters, and B, I don't really know a whole lot about it. But the overall score for the 2009 iMac uh, was an 8329. Not horrible for, uh, for a 2009 that's got an SSD in it. Um, now, the memory, of course, is uh, pretty darn good, uh, you know, at 16 gig. Um, but obviously, it's, it's only as good as the processor you have in there, uh, the CPU and the graphics card. And uh, I'm sure if someone was a little better with computers, they might be able to update that or get a little better uh, performance out of it. But, you know, this is just what I'm using, what I have. And, uh, you know, we're running ScreenFlow. That's the only thing we were running. So the scores are about pretty much the same. That's what you'll get. Um, there might be some 2009s that are a little faster uh, there. But that is the overall score for the 2009 iMac. But what we're really here to do is check out what we get for the Mac Mini. All right, so for the Mac Mini, uh, you know, we should see some better scores, obviously, and we do at 11,552. And again, you can check out their website, um, but, you know, it's the overall performance of the memory, the processor, and I think this would score higher had they not integrated the graphics card uh, with the CPU. But you know what? It's a small enough uh, device uh, that, that I guess warrants the idea of keeping things together and um, you know maybe keeping the cost down I don't know but it's still an impressive score and uh, we'll see exactly how the memory score increases and uh, if the SSD would have anything to do uh, with increasing that score at all um, as far as the performance goes but there it is and uh, that's what we got for the Mac Mini alright so the next test that we have is a, a big test towards the performance of your graphics card uh, as well as the frames per second uh, on your uh, video monitor, which is part of your graphics card. And uh, I got this from Jonathan over at TLD. I saw him do this in a video. And uh, it's a pretty cool battery of tests that it goes through to give you your frames per second as well as a score on the overall uh, uh, performance of your graphics card on there. Now, one of the downfalls for the Mac Mini is that it's a graphics card that's integrated into the CPU uh board so it, you can't upgrade it and uh, it kind of all works together so you don't get as good a performance uh, out of it so it's not necessarily really a gaming uh, um, a computer itself and everyone you know that is in the know pretty much understands that uh, that you know when you're using this it's not the best choice for that uh, the iMac uh, as you'll see in the results did much better so let's check those results out with uh, a little bit of what the video does which is pretty neat all right, so here is the test from Cinebench, and uh, it's actually pretty neat. It goes through a little graphic here, uh, testing out the um, graphics card, and uh, you know how it operates in the system. It gives you a total score. Now, um, you know, I'm just going to kind of let you enjoy this for a few seconds, and uh, we'll come back with the results. So you see here that it's it's moving, it's it panning in, panning out, changing, and you know giving you a little bit different direction on that. And uh, what we have here is a score of uh, 30.11 frames per second. And uh, what that really is telling you is you know the overall um, performance of your uh, graphics card on that for for OpenGL. And uh, the next test that we want to run here. Uh, is going to test out your uh, CPU and that's going to give you the total score that you're looking for as, uh, as far as the performance on that. Now this goes through a little bit of a graphics here and uh, we'll just go ahead and speed this up and uh, that way we can get to the end and give you guys the scores.
All right, so the test is finishing up, and what you get is a total score of 4.86. Now, you see there are uh, other CPUs out there, uh, the specs that they have and how they scored. Now, obviously, uh, this uh, iMac being a little bit older, you see, doesn't necessarily match up all that well with the uh, newer ones, of course. But uh, we did score over 5 in the first test, and then we got the 4.86 on this one. All right, so for the Mac Mini, I'm not going to bore you with the uh, test that we go through. Just give you the results. Uh, the first score was a 20.65 frames per second. Obviously not as good as the iMac, uh, simply because of the fact that the graphics card is integrated into the CPU. So the performance just isn't quite there, and uh, it's just a lower um, quality uh, graphics card and not bad in any way but just not as good as the rest and you see the CPU actually scores higher because obviously it is a newer uh, quad core i7 and uh, that's pretty much it for the tests on that and uh, let you know what else we got okay so we've done all the tests we got the numbers all done some look good some look okay some look bad and you're like oh man you know this is slow you put the ssd in it's a little faster you've got an older ssd it's not as fast you know we'll see the the numbers with the new ones and you'll be blown away and you'll be like mike what does all that mean look what you use your computer for and the experience that you have is the most important thing if you're someone that's on the internet uh using programs to balance your checkbook, edit videos, uh, edit photos, uh, whatever it is, emails, everything, anything you can think of, your experience and what you use the computer for is what's most important. I can sit there and tell you that an SSD is awesome and you may care less about how fast it writes to the disk because all you do is surf the internet. So you want something that's going to be a little bit uh, geared towards uh, an operating system that's going to run smoothly and clean. So you get the idea. What I want to show you here is, uh, for my use, how this works in rendering video. Now, the most important thing uh, for me is when I'm done doing the video, how much time I have to wait for my video to render. And uh, when I upload my video to YouTube, you know, they dumb it down and you try to get the best quality that you can in the smallest file because it'll upload faster, but you don't want to compromise quality with quantity and taking up space and blah, blah, blah. So what I did is uh, took a file on the iMac and a file on the Mac mini. Same exact five minute video, unedited, just a pure raw video. And, uh, you know, we could add a th couple things to it if we wanted to, but I just wanted to keep it easy to do this. Five minutes, when we convert this, we put it through Compressor, uh, which is an additional application on top of Final Cut Pro. And uh, we put it through 1080p, uh, the best vi audio quality, and, uh, you know, top-notch, highest level, best quality I can do. And uh, we exported them, and then we put them up against one another. So what I did was I got a little clock. And uh, I've got the times going behind it, and you can see it go, and uh, we'll see the results of that. Enjoy! All right, so we're setting it up, exporting them both out of Final Cut Pro, and uh, 1080p, high-quality audio, and uh, it's compressing it right now. And the Mac Mini uh, is the one that finishes first at 9 minutes and 37 seconds, which uh, I've run a couple tests, and I've pretty much come to the fact that you know, it's, it is, does run a little bit better uh, for obvious reasons being newer. Now, I really can't wait to throw the SSDs in here, bump up the memory, and uh, that might actually, you know, knock it down significantly. Now, what I mean by significantly is probably like a minute or two, but I don't know so for sure until we actually test it. So the iMac honestly doesn't fall too far behind it with a time of 10 minutes and 10 seconds. So, not too far behind. I'm really anxious to see what it does after the fact. And, uh, again, that's a test for that. And we do have one more thing that I want to show you guys. Okay, so, that's it. The Mac Mini did good in some things, bad in others. The iMac did better uh, in, in some things. And, you know, you can obviously see uh, that, you know, you're dealing with an older computer here. So, you're going to see a little bit slower. But, uh, ultimately, what we want to do is see what we can bump that bad boy up to so before we do all that let's show you guys how to make a backup of your operating system all right so first and foremost if you're going to do this on a thumb drive which i suggest you're going to want to get one that is uh, probably eight gigs or higher 
the file size for uh, Mountain Line is about 5 gig. So typically you're not going to find a 6 gig or a 5 gig USB. So what you want to do here is go to your Mac App Store and uh, if you've already purchased it, it'll be under your purchases. And uh, if not, it only costs $19.95 to purchase the uh, OS. So you can't go wrong either way. But once you download that, it'll go into your Applications folder. And you want to go into your Applications folder and you want to right click the actual install uh, there. And you want to do Show Content Packages, click on Contents, and then go to your Shared and Support. And then you're going to have that DMG file there. You can open up another Finder window because what you're really going to do with this is you're going to drag it into Utilities or Disk Utilities. And uh, this is where you're going to start doing what you need to do. So once we get this stuff out of the way, we're going to take the uh, DMG file, which I had already set up. Oops! Oh, no! And uh, what we really want to do is set up your thumb drive to be able to take this content and uh, move it over there and give yourself a backup. Now, the first thing you want to do is you actually either want to use the entire uh, thumb drive or you can partition it. Now, you see here I actually partitioned it to go 5 gig uh, on the first side and then we left the rest 2 point something or 2.5 on the other side that is left in there. You can do this if you just want to make it just a thumb drive for that, but I figure why waste that space, uh, just use what you need and um, you can continue to use it for anything else. So what we want to do here is once you continue that process, we're going to open the DMG file. Now a file folder is going to open up, you can just close that. What we're really doing is unlocking this tab so we can take our contents and slide it over to your thumb drive. Now one thing I noticed is, you see that there, that destination file was not listed. Not sure why, but I just want to make sure everything works here because I was having some issues. But what we want to do is go to your thumb drive and your folder that we set up and you're going to take the contents of your DMG file and you're going to drop it into what you are sending and you notice down below you have the destination which is going to be your portioned out side of your thumbnail or your thumb drive thumbnail good lord so once you have that in there and you have your uh, source set up and your destination you're going to hit restore and then you're going to click erase you're going to put your information in there and what this is going to do it's going to take a little while based upon whatever system you're using uh, you know how fast it's processing but once it's done you have your information on your thumb drive and you're all ready to go you can install this on any computer a mac computer that you need uh, or if you want to do a clean install a fresh install or in my case, we'll be doing a uh, replacement of the SSD, so we'll want to boot from that. So all you need to do is put your thumb drive in. When you restart your computer, you want to hold down the option key. And uh, what you normally do, it'll pop up with your uh, drives that you have available. The thumb drive will be an option, and then you can load your uh, mountain line and install it from there, and then you're good to go. So guys, that is it for me. Next up, we're going to be installing the SSDs finally. Uh, in our first video, the next video after that, we will do the memory. And then uh, after that, it's test time. So, guys, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, again, I want to thank Kingston for providing the equipment and the uh, stuff that we're going to be doing to do this install. So stick around. i got a lot more coming up. You have a great one, and I'll talk to you later. See you!